talking about having a problem with my political party. First of all, have you seen any human being called NDC before? No. There's no human being called NDC. It is human beings who make up the NDC. So I don't have a problem with NDC. And NDC does not have a problem with me. A few individuals in the NDC have a problem with me. Also because of my principal position on a number of issues. Not because Koko Anido has stolen anybody's money. Not because Koko Anido is lazy. Not because Koko Anido has gone to do something. They say what? Antipathy conduct. What is the antipathy conduct? That when you are doing something which is wrong and I speak my mind, it's antipathy conduct, I will continue to speak my mind. If you are the general secretary of the party, like John Sinkoju said in Kitia, you can go to court and lie that the party has won an election. Only for you to turn around two years down the line and tell the same nation that you didn't have evidence. I won't follow you for goodness sake. I don't do my politics that way. I'm not an immoral politician. I do my politics with morality. And so people like Johnson and Sinkoju do not define my politics. So if he stood somewhere and said he has sacked me, he has still not produced any evidence. And talking about it, so I'm still a bona fide member of the NDC. And as we are going, today is, what, 6th uh, May. Technically speaking, we're supposed to be going to Congress. No, we're supposed to be voting a week from today to elect. Uh, I will vote in my capacity as a former national officer and a former appointee. I will vote. I have the new latest ID card. I didn't bring it on me here. Let Asiye Nukite come and remove my vote from the ballot box. Secondly, on that score, I'm supporting Dr. Dufo in the presidential primaries. I'm not supporting John Mahama. And that's one of the reasons why they say they have sacked me from the party. Because I say I won't support John Mahama. I am not a slave to John Mahama. And I refuse to be a slave to him. He was vice president to John Atamios. Is that not it? I saw him as vice president and he didn't impress me. As president, he even worsened my thoughts about him. Everything President Mills did, John Mahama decided to destroy. And so if you are speaking, for example, around the issue of church, President Mills instituted a national day of prayer and thanksgiving to give thanks to God at all times. John Mahama came and stopped the national day of prayer and thanksgiving. So if, he, if for nothing at all, because he doesn't believe in God, I won't support him. Well, that is my feeling. Why did he uh, 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 truncate the National Day of Prayer and Thanksgiving? So if he does not believe in God, I refuse to support him. And these are the issues where people have become slaves to John Muhammad. I refuse to be a slave to John Muhammad. I'm supporting Dr. Kwame Dufo, not only because I don't like John Muhammad's policies, but because Dr. Dufo was finance minister under John Evans Tamils. So he worked with President Mills. I worked with him. I know what Dr. Dufo stands for. In terms of building the economy that President Mills built, 32, 34 months single digit inflation, introduction of single spine, clearing of the arrears, infrastructure expansion, three public universities in three and a half years, health facilities all over. I believe that Dr. Dufo has the acumen by training, by competence, by experience both in public life and in private life, I believe, I mean, for example, John Muhammad is telling us today that when he comes, he will scrap S. Gracia. Tell him that Nico Kwanjidu, I say he's lying, I don't believe him. Because why? President Mills instituted the Constitutional Review Commission to review the Constitution. This whole issue of Article 71 holders and emoluments is in the review white paper. John Mahama, you had four and a half years as president. What did you do about the white paper? Nothing. Today you are enjoying the S. Gracia. Then you come and tell me that when you come, you come and so stop enjoying it today. Convince me by say today you don't want it. Then I'll believe you. I don't trust you. Now come to Dr. Dufour's side. For four years as Minister of Finance, he didn't take salary. So even the S. Gracia, he didn't benefit from it. So I will believe in such a person more than the one who's enjoying it today and come to tell me stories that give me the power before I'll come and scrap it. No. So on the side of the politics, it is Dr. Dufo I'm supporting. And I believe strongly. We are hearing about all kinds of, from the elections committee of the party. And so I know that the Dufo team, first of all, has tried to meet the elections committee of the, of the party. As I speak to you, I know for a fact that 
a letter was written to the Electoral Commission yesterday, um, addressed to the chairperson of the commission. And in that letter, the Dufo campaign team is expressing concern about what the NDC's elections committee is doing, how they are trying to use a fraudulent reg register to go into the elections. Now, to the extent that the Electoral Commission is the body that is going to supervise the elections, a letter has been written to them that they should call an urgent meeting because they are not careful and they walk into the election next Saturday with that document, it will be fraudulent and it will have dire consequences. Of course. And that is why I say I don't support Asiedun Ketia's type of politics. Asiedun Ketia every day will want us to believe that Charlotte Osei, sorry, Jean Mensah is a bad person, is a fraudster, wants to steal some elections for the MPP, all the noise that Senu Ketia makes about Jim Mensa. Now, you are the chairman and the leader of the NDC. Under your watch, you are perpetrating fraud. Perpetrating fraud. And one reason why we have written to the EC is I know Senu Ketia. If the EC makes a mistake and goes to the election with a fraudulent register, when the issue comes up and the thing has been exposed, Senu Ketia will not hesitate to tell the unsuspecting NDC supporters that it is Jean Mensah who produced that fraudulent register. That's a certain case of politics for you. Oh, when you hear oh, Sir Jean Mensah say I catch him with some pen NDC for him. Oh, no, no, this register tan 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 no buy. A certain case will do it. Oh, on your feet. Oh, back on your feet. That's a certain case. And the issues will be ironed out. If it's not ironed out, of course, the next option, which is also available, is to go to court for an injunction and stop the election. A revolution is taking place in the NDC. And I'm happy that I'm part of that revolution. We shall clean up the NDC. Excellent. Once it's free and fair. You've seen him on the road. First of all, they said, oh, he couldn't go. Now he's on the road. He has a message. He has a message, and that message is worrying them. As compared to his main contender, John Muhammad, who has no message. He's turned himself into a comedian on the platforms. Yeah, a comedian. He has no message. The other day, somebody was comparing him to a Jaku, Bobukala, and Komode, and Ku. Yeah, 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 I'm telling you. And so if that kind of person, you tell me, so far, what message has he given? Apart from going on the platform, trying to mimic Nanado and Baumia, and trying, it doesn't excite anybody. And then he's talking all kinds of, saying all kinds of, making all kinds of uncomplimentary remarks. John Muhammad should forget it. Since we're talking about church again, John Muhammad is like Saul, and quote me anyway. The spirit of the Lord has long left Saul. And then the other time, because Dr. Dufour said he's Moses, who is going to take NDC out of captivity, because actually the party is in captivity. One of John Mama's aides came out and said, John Mama is Joshua. Joshua never lost any election. Joshua in the Bible. So if they don't even know the Bible, they shouldn't go there. John Mama cannot be Joshua. Joshua never lost any election. So, John Hammer cannot be Joshua. You've lost one election, go and sleep somewhere and allow the NDC to reorganize itself. Then the NDC will remain in opposition. Because all the statistics is showing that John Hammer cannot win any election in Ghana again. And we are using data. We are not, I'm not just talking. We are using hard data. That's why the MPP is so confident that they will cross the eight. Because they have the same data. And it is John Hammer's people who are lazy. So they don't do any mathematics. All they go is Obeti Boboli Bobo, Obeti Boboli Bobo. What is Boboli Bobo? So on Apple, so on Apple, let them go. All we are saying is that if the NDC wants to win 2024, we must change our candidate. Even the EIU uh, report that came recently, Economic Intelligence uh, Unit report, is very clear that if NDC wants to win, we must change our candidate. John Mama's time is past. We thank him for his service to Bali, his service to the NDC, his service to the Ghana. But he should continue to enjoy his ex gracia. How do you finish enjoying ex gracia? And then you come back and come and say we should put you on regular salary again. And then Ghana Odia. No. In so many ways. I don't want to do it. They have messed up in so many ways. And it's a good question that you have asked. But there's a history to the messing up. If you're talking about Euro bond, for example, the borrowing, it started with John Mahama. 1 billion, 1 billion, 1 billion, 750. Together, 3.75 billion he started it under Dufour and President Mills. Not a single euro. 
not one euro was taken. So if you started the mess and Kenoferata came and he found a cheap way of also making money and he has entered it, who would I blame? You're the uh, Yahidi Abe, you know, the ones now here. So then there's a principle in law that you don't create a problem and turn around to benefit from your own mess. John Mahama has created this mess, lost by one million votes. What makes him think that he will benefit from his mess? The truth of the matter is that MPP has messed up, is messing up. No two ways. But John Mahama is not the option. That's the, that's the message we are carrying. He is not the option. People love the NDC. But John Mahama's time is over. Go and check the statistics. Go and check the statistics. Go and check the statistics. In 2016, yeah, we lost badly. MP presidency. Fine. But 2020, when we were winning presidency, we were still losing. Sorry, when we were winning parliamentary, we were still losing presidential. A typical region, a central region. In 2016, while we were losing badly, we won in only four constituencies, both parliamentary and presidential. 2020, we won in 13 constituencies. We won in 13 constituencies, parliamentary. But presidential, we still won in only four. You, 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 you get it. So the NDC hasn't got a problem. It is Jomama who has a problem with the electorate. Then again, in Ghanaian parlance, Hifan Watida, say two Kohen Akunyaso, Esanadinebisi Akunyaso. Eya no mean, in two Kohen Akunyaso, and San Fanimbisi Akunyaso. Eya no mean. Another one spiritually is that this sword that we hold, that the president is going to swear the oath of office. Pastor, spiritually, you can hold it only twice. Jerry Rollins held it twice, 92, 96. President Kufour held it twice, 2000, 2004. President Mills held it once, he died, he left. John Mahama, on the 9th of 24th July, 2012, you held a sword of state and you swore an oath. On the 7th of January 2013, you held the sword of state and swore at it. You held it twice. Why do you want to hold it three times and be a curse upon the, the country? He cannot, Nanado has held it twice. He can't hold it the third time. Why does John Muhammad think that Ghana was created for him and that he will come and mess the nation up spiritually and physically? It won't happen. It cannot happen. Thank you. You know, I used to be around President Mills as his spokesperson, director of communication. So you saw me very active. One is growing and aging, and we must also train young people to come up and fill certain positions. So, yes, there are some young men on the field, but these days we sit as generals in the war room and we press the buttons from the war room and help the boys to grow on the field.